I'm Greg Jarbo, and uh, I'm the Content Marketing Faculty Chair at Market Motive. And what is that? I mean, what we're going to talk about in this first module of a Content Marketing Foundation course is literally content marketing? Um, okay, what is it? So content marketing is not a new concept. It's been around for over 100 years. In fact, one of the classic foundation stories of you know, the birth of content marketing goes all the way back to the Michelin brothers in France. And the Michelin brothers, you know, in case you haven't done your history, that's okay. You know, a little refresher right now. Were two brothers who made pneumatic tires and they were trying to sell them along with an innovative product at its time called the automobile in an era where the roads were horrible in a place, France, where frankly people didn't like to get outside of Paris and into the provinces because, my God, what was worth going out there for? You know, for Paris. It's all happening here. And what the Michelin brothers realized is if they wanted to sell more tires, they had to get people to drive farther and farther and use them. So what did they come up with? The concept that really is the birth of content marketing in my book was the Michelin Guide. And the Michelin Guide was unique in that it reviewed restaurants, not just restaurants nearby in Paris, but restaurants out there in the provinces. And the Michelin brothers are the ones who came up with the one, two, and three star rating system to say this restaurant, I know it's way out there, it's you know bad roads, uh, but guess what? To die for. The ratatouille, ah, oh, you you gotta have it. This is a three star restaurant. You you it's worth making the trip. And oh by the way, since we're gonna give you a guide and you have to get out of Paris in order to get there, we're gonna tell you where you can find gasoline along the way, uh, which hotels uh, you might want to stay at overnight. And oh, by the way, just in case you have to, how to repair a flat tire, particularly if it's a Michelin tire because it's a pneumatic and you know what, it's, it's quite easy to repair. And guess what? That put Michelin on the map. Why? They weren't trying to sell you more tires. They weren't telling you about the features and benefits of round or uh, tire repair, I mean, that was in there, but it was only a how-to article, not necessarily a feature and benefit. What they were doing was they were speaking to their audience about what their audience was truly passionate about, which in Paris in 1900 was food. And by creating content that got the audience to get into their new innovative automobile, and drive all the way out there into the provinces for that absolutely remarkable three-star restaurant. People got more flats. People had to replace their tires. But it was worth it. And oh, by the way, Michelin sold more tires. So that, <laughs> that's a great story. Every time you sort of, you know, hit a pause and like, well, we're doing content marketing and we need to come up with a concept. Think back to the Michelin Guide. It's, it's great foundation. So let's go to a modern definition. Where are we now in the 21st century when it comes to content marketing? Well, you can read the slide here and read the definition. And some people like reading definitions. I'm not going to read it to you. But I am going to highlight a couple of words in the definition that I think are absolutely critical to any definition. Of content marketing. The content that you create needs to be relevant and it also has to be valuable. Now, if it's not relevant, then you're not actually meeting my needs or interests, you know, and why would I be interested in it? And we've gotten way too tired of screening out the commercial that comes on, um, you know, trying to sell us snow tires. And pardon me, we live in Florida. I don't use snow tires. What the, what the heck is this commercial doing, you know, interrupting what I'm watching? So relevance is important. Relevance means that this content isn't going to get screened out. And the valuable, the valuable 
can, can work in a lot of different ways. It can be interesting. It can be useful. You know, value is an interesting proposition all by itself. But that's the key to content marketing. Uh, it's not just creating more spam. It's not just throwing more trash over the fence and hoping something happens. This is something where if you've created valuable and relevant content, you know what? Your customers will find you. That's a whole different kind of proposition. I know there's some skeptics who are saying, oh, come on, come on, come on. Content marketing is just a fancy new name for social media marketing, right? And the answer is, well, there is some overlap, and we're going to deal with that in Module 3. But let me just be clear here. Social media content is part of what content marketing needs to create, but it can also create content for your website, and that's not the social media. It can also create content that uh, your PR people can share with uh, uh, reporters or bloggers, and that's not normally considered uh, social media content. And by the way, all of that content can be optimized. So it, maybe it actually is part of SEO, not social media marketing. In fact, that's the other place that content marketing really overlaps. And it's not coincidental. It so happens that around February 2011, when Google rolled out the first of its multiple versions of the Panda update, all of a sudden even SEOs started to pay attention to content marketing. Why? Because Google changed the rules. And what Google basically said is if your content isn't valuable or relevant, you know what? It's not going to rank very well in our search algorithm. And all of a sudden, people who had been used to like putting keywords in the right places realized the content matters. You mean I've got to actually tell stories that are interesting? I've got to create information that's valuable? Yeah, you can make it relevant. That's the optimization part. But you know, if you're trying to optimize a piece of boring, irrelevant trash, God bless you, good luck. So yeah, content marketing has grown, it's like tripled in terms of web search interest since the Panda update. And we're talking about Panda 1, of course there was Panda 2, Panda 3, Panda 4. I mean, come on. Google is driving us in this direction. And so content marketing is pretty relevant today. Now, one of the other things that uh, people in content marketing struggle with is, oh, but you don't understand, I do B2B content marketing or I'm a small business, or pardon me, I'm an enterprise. And so content marketing has to come in flavors, right? Well, possibly, maybe, on occasion. So let's just question that assumption for a second. You know, content marketing has been around now long enough and enough people have done it that some research has been conducted and it's been conducted against B2C marketers and B2B marketers and small business marketers and enterprise level marketers. And when they start asking key questions like, okay, we're going to try to determine what is the difference between an effective content marketer and an ineffective content marketer. Let's see the results. Well, first of all, the most important thing to be an effective B2C content marketer is you need a documented content strategy. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, people who are winging it aren't as uh, effective as people who actually have thought about this uh, and written it down. Got it. Okay. No great insight, but, you know, interesting to note. Secondly, they've got to have somebody in charge who oversees content marketing. Oh, Lord, does that mean we have to have a reorg? Or maybe we just have to designate somebody who reports to somebody else. Whatever. But guess what? It really helps if somebody is driving this process. Third, they've got to be using more content marketing tactics than their less effective peers. And this is not an argument, more is better. This is just, pardon me, that's the way the data falls out. The people who are actually more effective are doing more different kinds of things. 
a broader range of tactics. And who knows, maybe it's that broader range that's part of the success formula. Same thing is true with social media platforms. The effective content marketers are using more than the ineffective ones. And last but not least, and this may be a sort of a result of the first four, by gosh, effective content marketers generally have greater percentage of the overall marketing budget in their organization. Wow, okay. That's the B2C marketing formula, but you don't understand. I, I'm not a B2C marketer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at the B2B content marketing formula. Guess what? You need to have a documented content marketing strategy to be an effective B2B content marketer. You need to have someone who oversees content marketing strategy. It helps if you are using more tactics and more social media platforms. And guess what? You spend a higher percentage of your overall marketing budget on content marketing. Well, that's similar to the B2C content marketers. But you understand B2B is different. Yeah, there's a couple small differences, but guess what? Overall, the top five criteria are similar. And when you get to small business, here's what you're going to see. Same five criteria. And you're in an enterprise. I know. The world is different for enterprises. Actually, not so much. So, four different data points. Let's net it out. <gasps> there's a pattern. And the pattern is, is, I don't care what flavor of content marketer you are. You can be B2C, B2B. You can be small business. You can be large enterprise. At the end of the day, there are five things that you've got to focus on if you want to be effective. We've already covered these. And are there differences between small businesses and large enterprises, between B2B and B2C? Well, sure. But they're all at the margin. What's the downside? If we don't do this, you know, is anyone going to come in and like whack us? And the answer is um, maybe not inside your boardroom, but it may happen on the next sales call that one of your salespeople makes. They may encounter someone I like to call the man in the chair. And the man in the chair actually refers back to a classic McGraw-Hill ad campaign from, I think, the 1960s. But basically, the guy in the chair asks theoretically some questions from, quote, maybe your salesperson. Okay, I don't know anything about you. I don't know about your company. I don't know about your company's product. I don't know about your company's, you know, reputation or anything about you. And so what was it you were going to try to sell me? And that's the downside of not having a content marketing program. We've actually found in work that we've done with companies that content marketing can shorten the sales cycle. Why? You're providing people with information at key points that they need in order to take the next step. So yeah, is there a downside? Sure. Stick with the status quo. Struggle swimming against the tide. You know what? It's probably smarter to have a content marketing program. So this introductory module in the Content Marketing Foundation tried to ask and answer these questions. What is content marketing? And oh, by the way, just how different are B2C, B2B, small business, and enterprise content marketing? And I think you've got the answer. Content marketing uh, means that your content needs to be relevant and it needs to be valuable. And by the way, that content can come in a whole lot of different forms. It's not just words on paper. It can be videos. It can be infographics. It can be webinars. It can be speeches that your executives are giving in public. You know, content can take a lot of different forms. But at the end of the day, you want to be an effective content marketer. And for that, we're going to go through five more modules. And let me give you a sort of a highlight of what we're going to cover. Guess what? We're going to cover all the things that makes you effective. 
we're going to cover content marketing strategy. You need a documented one. So we'll, we'll go through that. And by the way, we're going to have a little extra bonus because it's a problem that we've seen people encounter again and again, which is, all right, before we've ever done this in my organization, I need to get a budget for like a pilot project. How do I do that? What do I do when I don't have a budget and I'm trying to start up content marketing in my organization? So that's going to be covered in module two. Module three, we're going to talk about someone who oversees content marketing. Yeah, right, the org chart. And what we're really going to focus in, and this happens more in larger enterprise than other organizations, but even smaller businesses someday aspire to be medium-sized businesses, and medium-sized businesses want to grow up to be large enterprises. So you know what? It's probably useful for all of us to understand where this is headed. And we'll talk about the lack of integration across the marketing mix, both within the organization, but also outside when it comes to uh, communicating to customers. And why, guess what? Maybe it's time to organize a little differently. Third, we'll talk about all those content marketing tactics. And instead of just listing them all, because you know what? Lists are interesting, but they're not persuasive. What we're going to lo look at are the content marketing tactics that content marketers consider most effective. So that winnows down the list, and you're going to want to take some time and learn not just the broad range of things you could be doing, but the ones that seem to move the needle. And then, then we'll tackle the sort of subsidiary question of how do I produce a variety of content? You know, that seems to be a problem for some folks. Well, trust me, once you get your handle, uh, your, your arms around um, the whole uh, what is effective, uh, the variety of content pretty much uh, takes care of itself. In the fifth module, we're going to take a look at social media platforms. And again, content marketers are experimenting with a wide variety of them. Um, the list seems to change daily as new ones are introduced. Or suddenly the, the list is revised because uh, some social media platform just got acquired, but now the company that acquired it is, you know, pretty big and pretty interesting. So maybe we need to pay attention to that too. Well, guess what? Once again, we're going to do a little triage here. We're only going to look at the ones that seem to be most effective today. And you too may want to experiment with other ones uh, beyond that. But it helps to have as a core part of your content marketing programs the ones that are the most effective. And then guess what? The challenge is not having one. The challenge is actually producing engaging content for those social media platforms. So we'll look at that in module five. And in module six, we're going to talk about budgets. Why? Because it all comes down to the budget. You got to have one. And by the way, you need to be spending a larger uh, percentage of your marketing budget on content marketing in order to be effective. In order to do that, we're going to have to skin this cat. We're going to have to look at measurement. We're going to have to get you over the hurdle of how come it is so hard to measure the effectiveness of my content. You know, how do I know that? When, when can I turn around and show that to the top management so they can say, wow, that moved the needle, fine. You need a bigger budget next year? You got it. So that's what's coming. Um, stay tuned. Uh, strap in. This is uh, going to be a bumpy ride at times, but guess what? It is a journey worth taking.